Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us today. I am Casey O'Neill and have the privilege of leading Roman's business development in the industrial furnace market. I am joined by Dave Pridmore, application engineer here at Roman. And like many of you right now, I am presenting to you from my house, but uh, working very hard to stay connected to everyone using technology. Uh, I just want to start off quickly by saying that in the midst of all this chaos and unsure time, uh, just know that Roman uh, is fully operational and we're here to support you as you heat treat parts, uh, going to save lives, provide for defense and keep transportation moving, and also as uh, you build furnaces for that purpose and work on them. Uh, 2020 is Roman's 40th year in business, and in that time we have grown into a global leader in high current water cooled transformers. Our continuous pursuit of innovation has brought IGBT MFDC technology for use in high temperature furnaces. If you go to Roman RomanMFG.com, uh, knowledge slash knowledge slash webinars, you can find a webinar where we uh, detail the technical aspects of this technology. Uh, today, we're just gonna discuss a recent install of an IGBT MFDC system on a vacuum furnace that's used for various long cycle, high heat runs at a body coat facility. One quick note before we get started, in your GoToWebinar control panel, there's a section that allows you to send us a message or a question. As we're presenting this case study to you, uh, if, if any questions do come to your mind or you have any comments, um, please send them to us. Uh, we can address the questions when we're finished. And uh, if you'd like, you know, we'd obviously love to share your comments as well. Uh, so uh, with that, Dave, why don't you uh, start us off by telling us a little bit more about the project. Uh, Casey, great. Thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. I hope everybody's staying safe out there. Um, as Casey mentioned, we'd recently installed our IGBT MFDC technology at Body Coat. This was at a facility in Rancho Domingo, California, and it was a very large vacuum furnace uh, with four VRTs uh, heating the door of the furnace, um, the uh, roof of the furnace, and then uh, two VRTs heating the side. Um, and our overall goal and strategy for replacing these uh, BRTs is to kind of do it in stages. So here's a, another view taken a little bit closer. Uh, this right here uh, was the BRT that we were replacing. It's a 315, um, hold on one second. My screen sharing is paused. Are you guys able to still see my screen? I think we're still good. Okay, so um, let's go back to that. So uh, here's the 315 KVA VRT that we were replacing and then the furnace to the right here. And the reason body code came to us in the first place was there was a malfunction in the VRT and uh, they had some interest in new technology and uh, as well as some of the maintenance issues they had with the long water cooled cables. Uh, there were multiple uh, 50 foot or longer water cooled cables coming from this VRT to the furnace. And uh, they had to replace one of them and it really uh, caused them to, to, to look into ways to avoid that kind of issue in the future. Uh, one, just one quick other thing, uh, commercially, I know that uh, one of the, aside from what Dave just mentioned, uh, another appeal that, that our system had over just replacing the VRT was our lead time. Uh, we typically stay under 10 weeks to deliver um, our systems. And I know that uh, in a lot of cases, the delivery on other, other systems are significantly longer than that. So um, when they were looking at this, they appreciated all the benefits of it, but also we're excited about the fact that we could get this furnace running uh, at full strength again sooner than other options. That's right. Great, Casey. Uh, so, you know, moving on, uh, we had a couple challenges during this install, um, just based on the the size of the furnace. As I said before, they have had 50 foot water cooled cables. The uh, BRT is over here on the left. Uh, the water cooled cables will come down to this catwalk and then up through the uh, raceway here to the furnace. And you can see um, where the heating elements are and uh, the leads on the outside of the furnace right here, and I'll show you a closer picture later. But um, looking at our technology specifically, using these long high current secondaries add a lot of unnecessary impedance through inductive reactants in the secondary. 
So you can imagine that secondary loop is about 100 feet in diameter. And um, that would be a lot to uh, add to the uh, inductive reactants as well as create inefficiencies. So here's a here's a closer look at the bottom of the furnace. The VRT itself was arranged with a secondary delta configuration, and then going up to the furnace, there was a, um, a external Y configuration in this bus bar here. So our IGBT MFDC technology requires single phase heating elements. So we need even number of um, connection points outside the furnace. So with this, uh, we were able to connect our technology to this because it's externally connected. We, we ended up removing this bus bar and had uh, three uh, separate uh, single phase heating elements. So just as a summary for the system that we did replace, it was a replacement of a 315 kVA VRT and our product uh, offering was three single phase MFDC transformers and control and the value offering for our, our customer was close coupling and removal of a lot of water cooled cables. So just to go off of that, if you look at the uh, water cooled cables here, we pulled probably about, I want to say 600 pounds of copper uh, through water cooled cables off of this um, uh, furnace. And we thought this would be a uh, quick work, but it ended up taking us the almost the full day, first day of the retrofit. Uh, so we had to work a little extra harder in the following days. And then the next step was and to- just uh, uh, real quick, Real quick, uh, one thing, Dave, I, I want to make sure we mention. Um, one of the questions or concerns that, that Body Coat had uh, was how this system could could possibly impact their NADCAP. Um, and we actually had a conversation with NADCAP. Uh, and basically, the conclusion was uh, it really has no impact on that NADCAP certification other than um, the furnace passing the survey, which we'll get into later. Um, but but just from a uh, retrofitting side of things, uh, it doesn't have any impact on on a, a furnace or a, comp or a heat treater's NADCAP certification. Yep, that's right. So moving on, here is our actual transformer here. Uh, the next step was to weld the brackets onto the door of the furnace, um, and our our Romans product offering. Uh, was a 123 kVA transformer with a 56 volt secondary. And yes, that's right, that's a 123 kVA transformer. When we, with our control, we increase the frequency of our output from 60 hertz to 1000 hertz, and that allows to make the transformer so much smaller through smaller magnetics. So uh, there were three of these transformers then mounted to the door of the furnace. Of course, one of the uh, most critical things with any operation is water flow and cooling. So uh, this was the return uh, water manifold on the right here. You can see how many different lines they had. Uh, we ended up uh, adding another manifold onto the water output, which is what you can see on the left. Um, and this is the uh, uh, water uh, tubes to our, our control and both our, our transformers. Uh, we ended up actually adding on to here flow meters um, after this point, after we had uh, initially hooked it up. And here you see the control on the left, and you see the uh, breaker and the three phase upstream uh, here at the bottom left. And then we uh, mounted our control panel on some uh, stand, a stand right here. And right here you can see the uh, output of the control through these uh, black conduit hoses. And then uh, before you saw a picture of this raceway from the front, now you see it from the back. And you can see just this is where our, our four out cables uh, are coming up through this conduit here. And of note, this there's no water cooling in this, so it's uh, it's just cables inside there. So, so Jay, just to clarify, that track with the uh, new cables in it, was that uh, dedicated for the uh, this particular VRT and was it full before we removed everything? Oh yeah, so on the left side here of this picture, you can see the how much space we saved by removing cables and water lines on the left here uh, by reducing that. And that, that was really the selling point for this customer was 
you know, you can imagine this this furnace is huge and it's got water lines all over it, and they're trying to reduce that that kind of overall uh, maintenance issue. Because actually, what happened was there was a water line on top of the furnace, um, and it just it, it created a lot of work to try to fix that that water cable, uh, water water cooled cable. All right, so here at the bottom of the furnace, this is everything mounted and, and connected properly. We have um, our primary connections coming up through that raceway. Uh, we have our three transformers, uh, two here on the right and one on the left. We have water cooling going to the transformer itself, and then we have our secondary connections going to the heating elements above. At a later point, we're going to put some uh, protective covering over this, but this picture just kind of shows the, the general arrangement. So we took that VRT transformer that was across the way on the platform, and we brought the transformers right to the bottom of the furnace, as you can see here. And uh, at that point, after everything was connected, we had water, we had electrical connections, we had, uh, we had integrated the um, control panel into their HMI and PLC, and we ended up using a, a 4 to 20 milliamp um, signal conditioner. So we were able to use the same uh, signal that would go to the VRT and with some kind of uh, uh, adjusting in our control, we were able to match that. So the next and final step was to uh, do a survey run. And so here is one of their workers uh, getting ready to do a survey run. Uh, we closed the furnace at this point uh, we uh, got down to vacuum and uh, he trimmed it as necessary. And, and as Casey said earlier, um, the, uh, you know, once it trimmed, it didn't affect any kind of, it it, it heated fine. And, and so this has been in place now and the customer's uh, currently using it and it's working fine. So, you know, in summary, uh, we had a 315 kVA VRT that we replaced with three uh, MFDC transformers with our IGBT control. So with that being said, uh, thank you very much. And yeah, like in, in most cases on, on typical vacuum furnaces, uh, you, you typically had just have one uh, main power supply. Uh, with this one having four power supplies, um, you know, uh, powering different sections of the furnace, uh, one of the concerns was how will having a totally different type of power supply just on one zone impact the overall function of the furnace? And um, the general manager of this body coat plant has actually mentioned a few times how happy he is with the results of, of our system and how it works and how it works, um, you know, along with the other, other types of power supplies to, to make the furnace run very well. So, um, that that concern also of, of having one one zone on a different type of power supply proved to to be really of, of no real concern once we had it installed and running uh, without a ton of effort in in trying to get it set up right. Um, so, anyways, yeah, with that, you know, I we we didn't uh, get any questions. Um, I, you know, we're going to uh, we'll send out a recording of this just so that you can watch it later. Um, for one, I, I just want to say I, I appreciate everyone uh, getting on. Um, I hope that, that this was beneficial to you just to kind of see uh, this technology in action. I know we've, we've talked about it quite a bit. Uh, I've, I've been to many of your facilities and, and reviewed it. Um, so it's, it's fun to be able to show you a real life example of it. Um, I do want to say thank you to Body Coat. Um, for one, for um, installing this, you know, in their, in their facility, but also um, you know, they, they really, I know that they try to push the envelope when it comes to technology and, and seeing what's new and, and what's out there that, that can help them improve. And I do appreciate them allowing us to present this as a case study. Uh, I do have one, one question, uh, Dave, you can touch on this. Uh, why was uh, the IGBT MFDC solution a better option uh, than just Roman AC transformers with SCR? Sure. So I'm sure Casey, you've talked about this all the time, but uh, an AC versus an IGBT option with AC transformers, uh, you operate at 60 hertz. So the transformer itself, whether it be air cooled or water cooled, requires much larger magnetics. When we decrease that, or, or I'm sorry, increase that frequency, we can make the transformer so much smaller. The other factor is uh, 
we rectify the three phases up front to not only create three phase balance, but also to uh, high, use high voltage transfer, uh, transfer of energy, kind of just like Tesla and Edison did years ago. So instead of transferring energy versus, uh, via 480 volts, we're transferring it via 650 volts, which is that three phase rectified. So that DC current um, goes through our IGBT control and gets turned on and off at a rapid rate at a thousand Hertz. And so that just, it's a, a much more energy efficient way of delivering energy to the, the your process. Very good. Well, um, without uh, any other comments or questions, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Again, I just want to say thank you to everyone that, that joined us today. Um, you know, if you're, if you are a heat treater, um, this is a, this is a great option for, um, for a lot of different uh, applications that, and it will, it will produce energy savings, um, which obviously uh, go right to your bottom line. Uh, for OEMs, I know that there are a, a lot of different types of furnaces that you all build, and um, wherever you, you can build a single phase pipe connection uh, for resistance heating, this is gonna be a great option for that. And then obviously for companies that do a lot of service work, on furnaces in different uh, heat treating companies or uh, captive heat treaters, uh, you know, there, as as power supplies start to fail, um, there's a lot of opportunity to uh, add this particular system to your catalog of uh, services that you provide. Um, you know, there. So, anyways, I just want to say thank you, um, and you'll get a recording of this. Uh, so, if you do have any other questions on this, please feel free to reach out to me or Dave, um, and we'll make sure we answer your questions. Uh, yeah. With that, have a great day, and we Everybody will probably safe. talk to you soon. And stay safe and healthy. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you.